There once was a hamlet in England with a kindly lord, Master Kent, who discovered that the beloved farmland and forest used by a village of commoners for centuries was under siege. Master Kent's cold-hearted cousin, Edmund Jordan, had a secret plan to evict everyone and turn their fields into pastures for sheep. His goal was to get rich by producing wool for the emerging export market. This was in the 17th century. Edmund Jordan couldn't simply announce his plan to take over the village, however. That would only provoke huge resistance. So he acquired the land through subterfuge and forced commoners to leave and fend for themselves. This is the tale told in the novel Harvest by Jim Kreish. It's technically fiction, but not really, because enclosures of the commons are a brutal fact of life in capitalism, then and now. It's how capitalism grows, by seizing people's shared wealth, their land, their water, their forest, and by destroying their ways of life. That was the fate of indigenous peoples and traditional communities, whose ways of life were destroyed. If people weren't outright killed through conquest, everyone was forced to submit to the market regime, often through absentee or foreign uh, investors, perhaps as a slave or at least as an employee or consumer. Beloved landscapes were turned into private property, commodities for sale, and capitalism called it progress. It's sometimes difficult to step outside of modern culture to recognize that progress, as it's often called, is often an illusion. The idea of development as achieved through the ultra-marketization of life, technology, constant economic growth, and the production of more and more stuff can be a huge deception. It destroys the earth. It separates us from the natural world. It steals from commoners. It turns communities into groups of isolated individuals. Progress severs one generation from the next. It erases cultural memory. That's why it's helpful to talk about the commons. It helps us see that a great deal of so-called progress is actually nasty, antisocial, and unsustainable. It's worth noting that enclosures are not just a thing of medieval times, an artifact, artifact of some distant past. They're still with us today, everywhere, as corporations seize land and water and fisheries and genetic information and creative works. Enclosures even colonize our attention and consciousness, most notably through advertising and social media. Enclosure is what capital-driven markets do. It's about turning our shared wealth into private property and then selling it for big returns. Of course, standard economics never talks about enclosure. It doesn't really have a word for that unless you encounter the evasive word externalities, which means something external to market transactions, something that doesn't really matter to most economists. Economists prefer to focus on gross domestic product, GDP, because economic growth is seen as prosperity. They don't like to take into account the theft, the colonization, ecological destruction, and social injustice needed to produce capitalist growth. To talk about enclosure, then, <clears throat> is to open up a conversation that mainstream economics and politics doesn't really want to have, a conversation about the dispossession of commoners. Progress is a useful cover story because it lets the st state get away with giving sh our shared wealth to investors or simply letting them take it without penalty or punishment. The state looks the other way and the wealth of the commons is eroded or destroyed. Commoners are ejected and everyone's forced to, to submit to, to the regimentation of market markets and finance, no matter how predatory, anti-competitive, or unfair. Talking about commons helps us see that markets by themselves are structurally incapable of respecting the earth or providing equitable distribution of its wealth. And the state is too cozy with the rich to be a conscientious trustee on our behalf. The state doesn't want to distribute wealth fairly and protect the earth. It wants to privatize and marketize as much as possible and enrich those at the top of the pyramid. Talking about the commons not only helps us make this critique, it also helps us see 
that there are other ways to create and distribute value outside of the market state system.